Well, we're so honored today to have Candy Christmas with us. Candy grew up singing with her family, the legendary Hemp Hills. She's received numerous Dove Awards, has been featured on the Gaither Homecoming series, and has experienced incredible success even through her battle with depression. Candy found new life and purpose in serving the homeless, and she's here to tell us about that journey today. Candy, what an honor Hi, to have you thank here. You so, so good much, to have you. Shannon. I was sharing with you earlier, but I'll share with the viewers too that I used to turn on the Gaither series just to see what Candy Christmas's hair looked like and what you were wearing <laughs> because you were so beautiful and I want to look oh, like that. You're so and you're thank still beautiful. You. So time. thank you so thank much you for coming much. today. And even through the middle of your success, you faced some very dark times. That's right. Can That's you tell right. us about that? Yes, I would love to tell you about it. Um, I was traveling singing with the Gaithers and I had been with them about uh, six to seven years and had, um, had performed on about 50 of their videos, their homecoming videos. And it was really wonderful to be able to travel with Bill and Gloria and uh, Howard and Vestal Goodman, who are my aunts and uncles. And uh, in their twilight years at the end of their ministry, God just gifted me to be able to do that. And so I was just really at that time at the apex of my career and I fell into a dark depression and um, two different times, I hope I can say this, mm -hmm. but two different times I put a loaded 38 to my head mm -hmm. and wanted to end it all. But Shannon, I was too afraid of the afterlife of where I, my soul would be eternally. Mm -hmm. So I couldn't die, mm -hmm. but I couldn't live. Mm -hmm. So I was just caught between living and dying and going through the motions of life. I, you know, I'm a mom, I have three children, and uh, now I have four grandchildren. And, and for me, I wanted to find the source of my pain. And I feel like um, as, as horrible as pain is and the pain that I suffered, that I wanted to get down to the root of why I was suffering. And so I suffered for about three years, just uh, staying awake uh, day after day after day, night after night, and just experiencing this horrible darkness. But um, one day I was praying. I was still faithful to church, mm -hmm. still reading my Bible, mm -hmm. um, having my morning devotional, praying, all that. Mm -hmm. And so one day I'm, I'm binding demons. I think this has to be a <laughs> devil, right? This is a big old devil. So I'm, I'm binding spirits. And I said, you know, Lord, what I bind on earth is bound in heaven, what I loose on earth. And boy, I'm working up a sweat binding this <laughs> devil. And finally, I just stopped. I'm sitting there sweating and I'm working in <laughs> prayer. And I'm not getting anywhere. I'm getting more and more depressed. Right. So, so finally, I just stopped. I'm sitting, I'm sitting, um, you know, with my legs folded in my prayer closet, and I'm just praying, praying. Finally, I just looked up and I said, "You know what, Lord, this is not working, is it?" And so I felt the Lord impress my heart, and He said, "No, this is not working because your will hasn't submitted to my will. My will is still on the road with the Gaithers and singing in front of tens of thousands of people. His will." little did I know, was under a bridge here in Nashville. And so the moment that I submitted my will to Christ, not that I wasn't a believer or a Christian, I was, but the Lord had a different plan for my life. And so as one door closed, another beautiful, glorious door opened. And I've heard you say, I served my way out of depression. That's exactly right. That's so exactly tell us right. about the bridge. Oh, I can't wait to tell you about the bridge. This is what gets me up in the morning. About the time I'm coming out of this depression, I had lost down to under 100 pounds, mm -hmm. and I went to see a home that a friend of mine was building. And there was a lay minister there who was laying the tile in the home. And he'd seen me on the Gaither videos, and I was very frail and mm -hmm. broken and thin. And mm -hmm. so he said, you know, wow, you, you look different. You, <laughs> you, you really look like you could use some help here. And I said, yes, sir, I could. And he mm -hmm. said, well, uh, there are homeless people living along the river in Nashville, along the Jefferson Street Bridge, and I roast hot dogs for them. Would you like to go? And I said, yes, sir, I would. And he said, well, can you cook? <laughs> I guess I was so <laughs> frail and thin that he thought I couldn't he thought cook. Could cook. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he thought I wasn't eating. <laughs> and I said, yes, I was raised in Louisiana, and I can cook jambalaya for any size mm. crowd, small or large. Mm -hmm. And he said, well, make jambalaya and meet me under the bridge next Tuesday. Wow. And I did. And I made this jambalaya 
And I began to serve broken, gracious, mm -hmm. loving mm -hmm. people who had hit rock bottom in mm -hmm. their lives, who feel like they are outcasts uh, from society. Mm -hmm. And I went down there and just showed them the love of Christ. And they began to bloom and blossom, uh, you know, just under the rays of God's love and the generosity of His people. Mm -hmm. And so I just, I got excited. And so I, the next morning, I went and I, I, you know, I went to all these these uh, grocery stores and I start stocking up on peanut butter because it's okay. a high source of protein okay. and and um, uh, bread and pop tarts and breakfast cereal, anything that didn't need to be cooked uh -huh. or refrigerated uh -huh. because obviously they're homeless people, uh -huh. but that would still be nutritious. Uh -huh. So I'm gathering up all this stuff. I go back the next Tuesday night. I take my pot of jambalaya and I start giving out all this stuff. Well, word starts getting out. There is this lady down here that's, you know, that's cooking and so <laughs> come and she's giving away free stuff. Well, then three months, I'm serving 150 wow. people. And so then other people who wanted to get involved but maybe couldn't go with me to serve, some did, but some just said, look, I want to give you money to help buy the food, right? Mm -hmm. So then I had to get a business license, then I had to get a nonprofit <laughs> status, all the, you know, all the crazy stuff that you don't want to have to deal with, right? So um, it just bloomed and it blossomed. So today we serve 3,300 children a week. Wow. A week. Um, we try to fill the gap for the for the children on the weekends that eat and get free lunches mm -hmm. uh, at school mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and then uh, can't eat on the weekends. And so it's hard to believe that here in the United States of America, there are children who go hungry, but there are. That's right. I was sitting at a light the other day in Houston <laughs> and I looked over under a bridge and there was a guy sitting there. Yeah. And I thought about our interview coming oh. up and it began to go through my mind I wonder what got him there. Mm. And so many times I think we're judgmental and we think, mm. oh, well, should I give to this person because maybe they're going to take it and spend it on drugs yeah. or maybe they're yeah. going to not use it for what they say they're going right. to use it sure. for. And we get into that, should I donate? Should I give? Should I, what can I do to help them? Should I help them? Yeah. Talk to us a little bit about our attitude toward the homeless. Okay, so first of all, a homeless person, uh, if they're homeless, it doesn't necessarily m mean that they're not working. That's right. They work jobs, um, and a lot of them work day labor. But it takes an education to get a job, mm -hmm. okay, and it takes, uh, which many of them do not have, mm -hmm. and it takes uh, a $10 an hour job just for the m most minimal mm -hmm. of home or dwelling to live in, okay? And some of these uh, jobs, they're not making $10 an hour, so they can't provide housing. Um, and so sadly, I will admit that some of our homeless people do suffer from addictions, and that's where they need Jesus. Mm -hmm. And so uh, m for me personally, what I like to give is a gift card uh, to McDonald's, a, a $5 gift card. You can go and buy a lot of those, keep it in your glove box. Mm -hmm. And when you see a homeless person, give them that and they can go buy their own food. Or a Starbucks card, or you know, maybe I shouldn't um, shouldn't say name brands, but, but where, a wherever, gift a gift card. Mm -hmm. And so they can go and get just exactly what they need. I personally never give cash. Mm -hmm. I don't give cash. Mm -hmm but I do give other things and lots of it. I heard a story about a king that walked through a village and he saw a poor man and he gave him a coin. And so the next day he walked through the village and more, more of the poor came and he started giving each of them a gold coin. And so day after day, crowds and throngs of people came and he gave each of them a coin. And so the treasure of the kingdom was walking with him and he said, sir, you can't give everyone a coin. He said, as you walk through the village, just give one coin to one person and don't, don't give all the, the money away in the kingdom. He said, okay, I'll tell you what. You help me decide which one of these is Jesus. Mm -hmm. Because every one of them are. Jesus said, when you've done it unto the least of these, my brethren, you have done it unto me. And so I think that God puts that innate desire in us to be able to want to help and to want to reach out. That's a God-given gift. You can see the joy on your face. Thank He's you. just transformed where you were to God, so good. meeting these needs and to just bringing such a blessing into these people's lives, Candy. What an, a powerful ministry you have. Do you still do you still battle? 
You no, never battle. no, I've never, I've not been depressed a day since. Um, God has just, has blessed me. He knew exactly what I needed. You know, I had traveled on the road singing gospel music, and if there were ever any fruit to our ministry, uh, I never saw it because I was on to a, another city. And so here I get to see people flourish, give their hearts to Christ, and get up and get better. And uh, so there's just such a joy in it. Well, it's all over you. Well, it's you. all over your face, you can tell. So I know our viewers watching will want to know how they can contribute. Like you said, they might not be able to go out and help, but they can help you yes. help them. What is the best way for them to give? Oh, contact us at bridgeministry.org. So contact Candy at bridgeministry.org. You will be investing in eternity when you invest in this ministry. Candy thank Christmas, you. thank you so oh, much for being it's my here. my joy, my pleasure. Thank to you. Me. Thank God you. bless you.